We we'll call the uh, meeting of the Washington County Board of Supervisors to order. Um, this is. We will begin with a moment of silent prayer. Dice, Supervisor Galtz are excused. Um, Supervisor Brandt, is he? Thought he was going to be back from his, his trip. Okay, not certain on Supervisor Brandt. Can't hear you. Am I on? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, the affidavit of posting. This is a meeting of the Washington County Board of Supervisors. Prior to this meeting, public notice was given by posting a copy of the agenda in the office of the County Clerk and emailing the agenda to the West Bend Daily News, which is the official newspaper. In addition, the agenda was emailed to CNI Newspaper, Express News, Key West and Statesman, Milwaukee Journal, Sentinel, WIBD, WMBG Radio, and WTKM Radio. This above action is in conformity with the State of Wisconsin's open meeting law. Uh, first order is the consent agenda. Entertain a motion, Supervisor Schleip, Supervisor Schmiesek, any corrections, additions? Did you have one? So where's your heart rate? Or? No. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, seeing none, all in favor, seeing by this thing, aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Passes. Um, personal appearances, letters of other communications is uh, more. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to do a Casa Guadalupe presentation for the employee appreciation dinner funds that were collected for the door prizes. Uh, Noel, could you come up? Hi. Would you like to introduce yourself to these fine persons here? It's great to see all of you. My name is Noelle Brown. I'm the director of Casa Guadalupe Education Center, a nonprofit organization here in Washington County. I see some familiar faces in the room. So thank you so much. Well, we are presenting you a check in the amount of $2,403. This was donated, basically donated by the uh, employees at, for their uh, uh, door prize for the employee appreciation dinner. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. That's from the bottom of my heart. Uh, from this organization, and thank you to Ashley. I know that Ashley has been involved with our organization uh, for the last couple of years, and just appreciate the support. Thank you again. Awesome. Okay, now don't take this. I was going to say I can't okay. cash this. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a clever paper one for you. Sorry. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Transit merger update.
uh, set some time for a call. We had a subsequent call um, earlier this week. Uh, the results of that phone call were that at this point in time, they, they have uh, upcoming election of all their county board supervisors as we do in a month and a half. Uh, and so we're going to wait to circle back until after uh, after election's over. So, no news. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to consideration upon request reading of resolutions and ordinances. 2019 Resolution 56, conveyance of an approximate 31.38 acre property known as Lizard Mound County Park to the state of Wisconsin. I believe Ethan is going to handle it. Supervisor Basil has a question. Do you need a motion, sir? Oh, sorry. Uh, motion by uh, Supervisor Basil, Supervisor Kelly. Uh, so, just so everybody knows the process here, we've spent a lot of time. Uh, working with stakeholders, Farmington Historical Society, Shalom, and others, um, to see that what they want to do. And, and the uh, response from those in Farmington, and Supervisor Stefan and I have met on this several times, and he's met with the stakeholders several times, is they want what's best for the park. Uh, and we know that the effigy mounds are deteriorating. Um, and so we know we have to find an owner with expertise in archaeology, uh, and finances to help do that. There's issues with the trails, there's all kinds of other issues. We hold the deed for Lizard Mound, but we do not own Lizard Mound. The state owns Lizard Mound, there's plenty of deed restrictions. What you're petitioning to do is you're petitioning to go to the Natural Resources Board uh, and for them to vote to give the park to the Milwaukee Audubon Society. It doesn't matter who you pick, the Natural Resources Board has the final say. Um, and so we felt, uh, rather than, the, the, the DNR, it's non-negotiable. They will not sell it to a private entity. They have to have somebody uh, who will take care of the effigy mounds. Milwaukee Audubon Society already owns effigy mounds. Uh, and then they've created, um, I don't want to say the word partnerships, um, in the literal, like, People are coming together to own the park, but Milwaukee Audubon Society will own or hold the deed and they will continue to have community relations and partnerships to help them uh, with their mission of the park. So happy to answer any questions, but this is a petition to the Natural Resources Board uh, to move the deed uh, to Milwaukee Audubon Society. Okay, are there any questions? Supervisor Bowser. Okay, I just want to verify that the public is still going to have full access to this land the same as it would be a county park? Correct. Part of the deed restrictions um, is, is that. All right, thank you. Supervisor Kellen. Disregard. Or Supervisor Sorcy. No. Okay. <laughs> Supervisor Mahalik. Thank you. I actually do want to say something. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious. Uh, Supervisor Bosser brought up one point. I wanted to make sure that the access was there. The other question I have is why the Milwaukee Audubon Society and not make it a state park? I guess I don't understand why uh, the state wouldn't just want to pick it up. Is there a reason for that just for our vast viewing audience? I mean, that would be my question. The state doesn't have a near enough state park to have the equipment. That's why they gave it to us. We had, we had county parks near them uh, that we could, we could have equipments for mowing and things like that. Um, they have no interest in having this park. Um, I guess if this falls apart, I mean, that was one of the options. But again, they're looking for an owner uh, that has expertise in effigy mounds. Uh, and the state DNR, uh, the historical, I mean, there's political at play, but the historical society simplistically has control over effigy mounds. They don't want it uh, as another asset. The DNR uh, then has it because they're the, they're, they own the state property. Um, they want to put it in the hands of somebody who's going to preserve the effigy mounds. And so this was, um, you know, they're, there are thought. Now, just so you know, Milwaukee Audubon Society does not mean Milwaukee geographically. They're actually kind of suburban Milwaukee and out. Their members are from downtown, but they stretch 
to Johnson Creek and up to Mar Mar Mayville's where they have their current property and they have Southeast Wisconsin membership all over. So really the Milwaukee Audubon Society's core membership is Washington, Ozaukee, Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, Jefferson County, is Waukesha. Uh, so it's not like there's a, this is a group of downtown Milwaukee people trying to take this over. Uh, this is a group of members from the area. That's where their membership is. And they explained that to the Public Works Committee. Thank you. Supervisor Mary. Thank you, sir. Are we just assuming that there's an interest on the other end that we're starting the train rolling here, but is it going to then be picked up and is this going to happen? Or is this, everyone this, going to say, no, we don't want it, just come and come back here in, in a month and it's ours? This is going to, want, this is going to happen. All of society is already negotiating with the DNR. So, so it's pretty well a done deal. I, I, the Natural Resources Board has to, uh, I'm a Marquette fan, Shaka Smart was supposed to be our head coach, done deals are, are not uh, things I say. Uh, but, no, the DNR board, ha I mean, we have to get this to the DNR board, so I won't say it's a done deal, but this is the organization that the locals and the county and the DNR have decided to take to the DNR board, so as close to a done deal as you can get. Everybody's cooperating. Correct. Supervisor Stephen. Thank you, Chairman. I don't have a question. I just This highly tourist area where uh, people come from all over the world to these parks. Um, there's field trips there daily. People and kids going in and out of there. The educational value of this park is essential to this community. Um, the preservation of this park is, is everybody out that I've talked to wants this park to continue and be preserved. Um, and we got to remember that it's not just the Milwaukee Audubon Society. River's Edge is going to be involved. The Farmington Historical Society is going to be involved. The three of these, with the collaboration of these three, they have a passion to make this park great. Uh, I've talked with all of them, and I believe it's a good solution to where we're at. Uh, I haven't heard anybody that is against this, and I've talked to a lot of constituents in my area, and they want what's best for this park. So I will be supporting this, and I hope the rest of you supervisors Thank you. Supervisor Merton. Thank you. <clears throat> you speak of deed restrictions. What are the deed restrictions? Uh, simplistically, uh, uh, we have to go back. It has to go back to the DNR if we don't want it. Uh, we have to get permission from the Historical Society if we ever want to do anything to the park. So they have the interpretive center out there that was by deed restriction in conjunction with uh, the Wisconsin Historical Society. Um, so they're, they're largely based on the preservation of the effigy mounds. Uh, but, you know, that's why the biggest deed restriction is you don't have control over who to give the park to. The DNR board does. And our board. We don't have control over what? Who gets the park. The DNR board has to, the NR board is the final say. So this, the, what's going to happen procedurally is we're going to say to the DNR, we know, we want to give this up. So we're going to give it to the DNR, the NR board. They're going to accept it. The NR board then will give it to whomever they think is the best uh, for it. So the deed restrictions are we have to get approvals from the Historical Society when we make changes to the park. And the Natural Resources Board is in control of who gets to operate the, the property. You have to get control from the Historical Society Board. Which one are you talking about? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Or Wisconsin, Wisconsin Historical Thank Society. You. See no further discussion. Uh, we'll vote on this electronically. <coughs> Remember, hit present first. <coughs> Screen's not up. What? Yeah, I know. I have a title. Oh, okay. Twenty-two to zero passes. Two thousand nineteen resolution fifty-seven amend 2020, 2024 capital improvement plan, county highway project, county trunk highway E, county trunk highway U, county trunk highway K, and county trunk highway Q. 
If staff can handle that, or? I motion. I take a motion. Motion by <coughs> Supervisor Bishop, Supervisor Mary. I think the fact is self explaining. We, we don't have to have an explanation unless you have questions. Seeing no discussion, we'll vote on this electronically also. Motion passes 22 0. 2019 Resolution 58, Washington County Board of Supervisors, Board Size. Supervisor Mahalik, Supervisor McCune. Paul Roback's going to give a brief explanation of how we got here. Powering up. Um, just a brief introduction again of who I am. I'm Paul Roback. I work for UW Madison Division of Extension in Washington County. Uh, it's a mouthful, I know. It is what it is. Uh, I'm your community development educator, uh, primarily providing educational programs locally here in Washington County in organizational development and local government education. Uh, as some of you may recall, I was involved with the 2015 study committee as well and that resulted in uh, the county board size of reducing in 2016. And so I've been brought in again uh, to support the study committee process, um, help do some research, facilitate some meetings, and then uh, present the study committee's findings to you this evening. So I'd like to reiterate that these aren't my findings, these are the study committee findings um, that are before you this evening. Just a quick reminder um, of who all served on the study committee. You can see it's uh, a large group of nine individual supervisors uh, representing uh, a wide uh, variety of uh, types of individuals in the county and experience on the county board. Uh, what were they tasked to do? Why are we doing this? Uh, really looking to the future, uh, we have the 2020 census uh, that's starting. Uh, we have transitions on the county board as well as transitioning to uh, the county executive form of government. So really starting to examine what needs to change to help support all that uh, occurring in the future. So again, why now? Uh, Census 2020 and redistricting capture the experience of our current board members. And really this is a continuation of the 2015 work where at that time that study committee said that we're going to try this out. Uh, the board reduction and the restructuring, and that at a future date we're going to take a look at it and uh, look at the board size again as well as the structure of the committees. And in fact, two years later the committees were uh, looked at again and some changes were made um, right away at that time. So uh, with county board size though, you're kind of limited on how often you can do that. Uh, you get a one easy opportunity and that uh, with the redistricting, it's a convenient time to uh, re, um, look at how many supervisors you want, and I'll go into more detail about that in just a moment. And then you get one other opportunity uh, in between the decennial censuses. You can either do that on your own, or the citizens can petition uh, for uh, the size to be reduced. The scope of the work of the study committee, um, as I mentioned, was board size, committee structure, roles and responsibilities of the board chair, as well as looking at what type of support all of you will need on the county board moving forward with the county executive form of government. Uh, what we really focused in on over the last four months was that first bullet, the board size. So for those that were around back in 2015 when we looked at this, uh, we, the process was a little different. We looked at, we went from 10 committees to six committees. We were really focused on how many committees we needed to operate um, efficiently and effectively here in Washington County for the county board. Uh, this time around, uh, we took the opposite approach of how many supervisors do you need, um, and then we'll develop the committee structure appropriately to help you as the policymakers um, support county functions and operations 
in your policy decision making, as well as how many supervisors do you feel are necessary to represent the citizenry in Washington County. What did this committee do? Um, as I mentioned, they met four times. Uh, we had a redistricting presentation by Eric Dampat, the GIS manager. Um, we researched comparable counties. We identified strengths and limitations of the current board size and committee structure. And then we had a couple of guest presenters come in, including John Hulkamer from the Wisconsin Counties Association and the administrator and county board chair from Walworth County. Um, and I'll get into why we included both of those. Uh, but kind of a heads up, Walworth County has 11 supervisors, and uh, they've been operating that way for a while, so they're our closest uh, neighbor with a, a smaller size that we could bring in and ask questions of. And their county administrator is also a retiree, or maybe he's already retired. So, um, so it was a great opportunity to uh, capture his knowledge before he retired, and it just so happens that John Polkemer is also retiring, and his <laughs> last day is on the 17th of this month, so um, I don't know if we're just uh, catching him at the right time or if coming to Washington County uh, causes people to reflect on <laughs> the extent here in the organization. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Those decisions were made long before uh, they came to us. So uh, a little bit about what we learned from Eric Dancott is that uh, the redistricting timeline, we have the census going on in 2020, the kickoff, although it's already kind of started, um, the kickoff is really April 1st, and uh, all of us are required to fill out our census forms and turn those in, and then the county will receive census block data um, back next year, on April 1st, 2021. Census block data is the smallest unit, essentially, that, that can be used then to start building supervisory districts as well as municipal wards and so on. Uh, you get a pretty quick turnaround then on adopting your supervisory district plan. So if you are going to make changes, it's recommended that you have all those discussions and you have um, a redistricting committee or somebody making kind of policy decisions and how you're going to guide that process well in advance of that April 1st date. So when you get the data, um, whomever is in charge of redistricting can get that done and out the door to the local government so then they can start creating their municipal wards. Uh, so you can really see then that from June to October, um, you have the local governments creating their wards, then there's going to be a county public hearing, and then the final plans will be submitted to the state, and then it really goes in effect in April 22, 2022. Uh, so the decisions that you're making today are going to help inform the next board, and then their decisions are really going to inform then uh, the redistricting uh, plan and process and how to move forward. Now, Eric, when he presented, he wanted to stress that he doesn't have a preference on what you want as a board size, if you want to keep the same or change it all. But what he really recommends is that if you're going to make changes and, and reduce it or increase it if you wanted to, it's best to do it in conjunction with the redistricting. So it's significantly easier to do it to create the fair districts that meets the constitutional, statutory, and county requirements. So the comparisons he gave was in 2011, uh, when we redistricted after the last census, the deviation between the smallest supervisory district and the largest supervisory district in Washington County was 6%. So that's how many um, residents each one of you is representing. In 2015, when we redistricted, um, when we downsized, so we are doing it outside of the decennial census, it was a deviation of 21%. And the reason for that is, is when you're doing it outside of the census redistricting, you have to grab larger units. You can no longer grab those census blocks, those smaller units of, of residents, geographic territory of residents. You have to grab, grab those municipal wards, so the larger ones, um, because you know, those are being used by the local municipal <coughs> governments. So if you start changing all of it, then everybody has to change everything, so and that's not allowed. <laughs> so you have to grab those larger um, wards in order to make it work. And uh, it can be done, it's just that uh, it really becomes more challenging. If you look at our current supervisory districts, you can see some of them um, are quite uniquely shaped because of they're trying to balance out a number of different um, priorities, including trying to have somewhat equal representation so that each supervisor is representing roughly 
uh, the same amount of county residents. You can see there was a difference, though, of 21% between um, the smallest uh, representation supervisor that has the least amount to the supervisor that has the most amount. The standard that um, the best practice is 10%. So 10% uh, or less is what kind of the goal is. So uh, in 2011, we met that. In 2015, uh, we were more than double that because of trying to grab those larger units. Uh, this map is courtesy of uh, NACO, the National Association of uh, Colonies. And it's the United States, as you can see, the darker the blue is the greater concentration of county legislative bodies. So the more uh, supervisors in other states are called commissioners. And so when we hear feedback quite a bit from folks that, wow, other states have a lot less, uh, maybe they only have three or five supervisors or commissioners, um, this map kind of shows how unique Wisconsin is compared to the rest of the United States, for better or worse. We are kind of based off of the New York model, and you can see that we even have a greater concentration than they do. And only several other states have as much um, legislative representation at the county level as we do here in Wisconsin. Uh, there's lots of different reasons for that. Um, it's really difficult to make comparisons between um, uh, different states, just as it's difficult, as you know, to make uh, real easy comparisons between different counties uh, when you look at number of supervisors or um, how many, what type of it, uh, administrative form of government you want. Those are, are kind of uh, your decision on how you think it's best to operate as a county. Uh, we, the study committee did look at uh, Minnesota briefly just to see they have five to seven supervisors or who, Commissioners, excuse me. Um, they're also paid twenty-six thousand eight hundred forty-five as an annual salary. So salaries um, significantly more than um, the, the salaries here. Um, and then each state kind of mandates different services that county provides. So as you know, Wisconsin mandates quite a bit that um, counties have to provide, including uh, maintaining highways, uh, providing health and human services. Uh, many of our counties uh, have county nursing homes, and so in other states, the state um, provides uh, those type of services and they're not uh, mandated down to the counties. Now that's not really an easy comparison to make either because there's lots of other counties that have those type of mandates and they have less uh, county board supervisors and commissioners than us. However, we thought it would be helpful just to look at this just to show how unique we are in Wisconsin, um, for better or worse, and just so that you get an understanding of um, how were different than some of the other, other states that are out there. Again, it's up to you to decide what size you want to be and what you think is the appropriate size for Washington County. Wisconsin, now the color differences in this slide by county is actually population, not supervisory, county supervisor density essentially. It's population. So the darker the red uh, is 100,000 plus in population. Uh, you can see in the bottom right corner of the slide, I kind of have more of a blow up of southeastern Wisconsin. A uh, county that has the smallest number of supervisors is Menominee. They have seven. Menominee is a little bit unique. Well, it's really unique because most of the county is a tribal nation. Um, and the other um, unique county is, is Milwaukee County as well. They have 18 supervisors. They have certain statu statutory um, expectations for that county, including that they're, they're manned by the state to have a county executive form of government. So we really want to, I think, focus in on some of the other counties that are out there. Uh, the number, the main number is the number of supervisors that um, that county has. The number of parentheses is what state law allows that county to have based on the population. So although Washington County has 26, we could have as many as, I think it says 47. Uh, so we could go from um, significantly higher if you want. Um, and if you look at our um, up north or, or more on the center of the state, Marathon County, they have a population of over 100,000. Uh, they have 38 county board supervisors currently, and they're allowed to have up to 47. It's a large geography. Um, it was reported in the news uh, in November 2019 that they are also looking at um, the appropriate size for their county board government with the eye towards reducing. Uh, so those are the extremes. Um, 7 to 38. Um, some of the other smaller counties, as I mentioned, Walworth and Washera, they both have 11 supervisors. 
and they've been operating that way uh, for quite some time. Uh, the study committee looked at um, a couple different data points that I want to present to you today. So this slide here, which um, is pretty similar to the one that's included in your committee packet, is the counties with the 10 greatest populations of the state of Wisconsin, excluding Milwaukee. Um, I excluded Milwaukee because uh, they're significantly bigger than the others, and they also have um, 18 supervisors. So it kind of um, is a little bit of an outlier in the rest of the data. So we looked at the 10 next largest counties, and you can see it's really difficult to identify a rhyme or reason between um, each of the counties based on population and, and the supervisors that they have. So you can see, um, as comparison, Washington and Marathon counties, our populations are very similar in size. Uh, we have 26 supervisors. Each one of you uh, represents essentially 5,203 residents. Uh, Marathon County, very similar county population. They have 38 supervisors, each representing 3,577. If you take the mean average of those um, 10 counties, each of those, if you did that, then each supervisor is theoretically representing 8,128 residents. If you applied that ratio to Washington County with our population, that would come out to 17 supervisors. So 17 is one data point. Um, again, it's just a data point. There's really no strong logic reason <laughs> Um, to go with that number, but it is uh, one of several different data points that I'll point out to you briefly here. Uh, Wisconsin Counties Association, when they came, they provided us um, a sheet of paper that had all 72 counties on it, and that was arranged by um, the counties with the lowest number of supervisors all the way up to the highest number. So um, Menominee on side one, all the way down, and on the back side, <laughs> kept going uh, to Marathon with 38. So uh, the mean average, if you counted up um, all the county board supervisors in the state of Wisconsin and divided by 72, you came up with 22 as the average. Uh, and then if you look at other statistics, uh, the modes, the value that occurs most often is 21. 14 counties in the state have 21 supervisors. And then uh, also the middle value is 21 as well. So uh, when you looked at the sheet of paper and you lined up all those counties, uh, the county that's in the middle they have 21 supervisors. The last data point I want to present today is the study committee itself, but uh, the process that they went through and through the meetings, um, they had uh, a ballot at the end of the meeting. So as they learn more information, we ask them, hey, write down um, and provide us what you think is, what you believe is the ideal um, size of the Washington County Board moving forward. So you can see at the first meeting in October, uh, it was quite a wide variation there, um, from 5 up to 27. At the second meeting, it went from 9 to 26. So each one of those numbers represents um, one of the study committee members' um, preference for county board size. And then at the last meeting, um, it ranged from 11 to 28. What is kind of interesting and for me is that the average for all three of those was 16. So again, it's just another data point. Um, to think about, um, but again, what I also like to point out, not only that 16, but the wide variation of responses from, um, from the first meeting, you had the lowest one of five, and the last meeting, the highest one was 28. So that's a pretty big uh, swing of um, ideas and opinions on what the ideal board size should be. So again, the three data points, um, 17 from looking at the 10 largest counties, populations, excluding Milwaukee, Wisconsin County Association data, and the average was 22, or the mode was 21, and then the study committee ballots, it was 16. So again, um, quite a variation there between 16 to 22. So how did we come up with 21, or how did the study committee come up with 21 um, for the recommendation that came to you today? And this is what was communicated during the meeting. So there's a broader support for a gradual reduction. So although some really um, had a preference for a smaller board, uh, there was a recognition by some members that um, there may not be enough support on the whole county board to go down to such a low number. So a gradual reduction uh, would work towards 
getting towards the lower number. It would also be very similar to 2016, where the county board was reduced from 30 to 26, and now you'd be reducing from 26 to 21. Uh, it was also mentioned that there's a lot of unknowns related to the transition that the county is going to be going to the county executive, former government, uh, and that relationship between a county exec and uh, the county board um, is a different relationship, and that relationship is also different with every, the counties that have county executives, they're each <laughs> um, a little different uh, based on uh, both the county board as well as uh, those elected in the county executive position. Although the recommendation before you doesn't look at or doesn't recommend reducing the number of county committees, um, it was discussed at the study committee level, and it was mentioned that if, um, if we were to reduce by one committee, um, and that's been a discussion that's been taking place, um, you could easily then justify 21 members. So you would have four committees, each committee would have five members, plus the county board chair would give you 21. And the last um, item that was mentioned during uh, the discussion was that 21 is divisible by three. So for those county uh, resolutions where you need a two-thirds vote, um, it's easy to come up with what that number is that you need to have passed. So something divisible <coughs> by three was um, desirable by some of the members on the study committee. So next steps. Um, after the recommendation. So as we meant, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, although the city committee was originally tasked with uh, multiple things to accomplish, uh, they only really accomplished the first thing because um, they felt that you had to identify the county board sites first before you could start looking at um, those other bullets, uh, establishing the committee structure, the roles and responsibility of the board chair, and the county board staff support. And the other main thing that needs to happen is address redistricting. So there's different ways you can do that, um, and you're going to have to decide at some point whether or not if you have the study a new study committee continue, uh, because several of the members um, aren't running again for uh, the county board. Um, so if you do have a new study committee, are they going to be doing the redistricting, or will there be a separate redistricting committee? Um, you also have to decide what type of process you want. Do you want a committee to lead the process? Uh, the last couple of times there was a committee and then staff really took the lead with uh, GIS um, to um, develop different drafts of uh, the uh, supervisory districts and then uh, the committee made a recommendation to the board or you could contract that out with another agency like Sewer Pack. So that's what Walworth County, they contract with Sewer Pack to come up with their um, supervisory districts. And then lastly, um, and this, a lot of these items came up uh, for discussion in the study committee as well, is that whoever's in charge of redistricting was going to have to identify some parameters to work within. And so what Eric described, Eric Dampot described as part of that, is that in the past there's been direction provided by um, that redistricting committee on things to think through and criteria that he can use in creating supervisory districts. For example, in the past, uh, supervisory districts uh, the desire was to have them align with school district boundaries whenever possible. Another example is minimizing the number of municipalities a single supervisor represents. Um, and then a mixing, avoid mixing rural and urbanized areas with a single district. So those are some of the filters or criteria that we're using in the past. There's probably an endless number that you could provide and different criteria that you can use, but those are um, some of the three main ones that um, were considered the last time going through. We just so that is the conclusion of the study committee report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Bosser. All right, I'm excited tonight. So first I want to thank Supervisors Carr, Schlieff, Dice, and Mahalik. You guys are the ones who made the motion on the study committee and on the executive committee. I also want to thank all the supervisors who voted in favor of this proposal. I don't know if everybody in this room knows this, but back in 2018, one of my campaign promises was to support reducing the size of the county board. And at the time, I proposed a board size of 20 to 22 as a first step. And that promise was published in the Washington County Daily News. It was offered for publication to the Washington County Insider. 
And I also posted that promise on my blog on March 4th, 2018. That promise came as a result of feedback from numerous neighbors of mine, all of whom felt like our board is too big to be effective. When I made that promise, I proposed an ultimate goal of 13 to 15 for a board size over time through incremental reductions. And my neighbors all elected me based on that promise as well as others I made. So tonight, thanks to the work of my fellow supervisors, I get to vote yes on this and I'm keeping and fulfilling a promise I made. So I'm excited to be able to do that. I have worked hard to keep all my promises, and with the exception of one, I have kept all my promises. And I want all my neighbors to know that when I make a promise, I will do my best to follow through. <coughs> I think our next step is going to be 2026. I don't know if I will still be on the board then. I don't know who will be on the board then at that time. Um, perhaps I will. Perhaps I'll move on to other things. Um, but when that time comes, I think in the case of the board, we need to, at that time, take another look at our board size and see about reducing again, maybe to 17. Because even at 20, or even at 21, we're still one of the dark blue squares on that national map that uh, Mr. Robach showed us. I would like to see us ultimately reduce to 13 or 15. And maybe the, in preparation for the 2032 election will be a time to make that final step. There is a challenge that Mr. Robach pointed out with dealing with wards in 2026 instead of blocks. I have a feeling we can look at overcoming that and maybe overcome that. I do want to mention, when I was in uh, Washington, D.C. at the White House, representing Washington County, along with Supervisor Bolola, we met with the county board supervisor from Minnesota. And her county had five county board supervisors. Now, like we do, they serve on all sorts of other boards. And a lot of those boards had 20 to 30 members on them. And she was encouraging all those boards to look at reducing their size. And she was seeing how ineffective they were versus the small county board of five that they had in her county. Now, her county was a rural county. For a county like ours with a bigger population, five might be too small, maybe not. But I definitely want to work to continue to reduce our size so we can continue to be more efficient and effective. I also look back at our meeting last month. <coughs> and I look at that as an example of how being too big makes us inefficient. We spent almost three hours on one issue. And when the final vote came in, I don't think there were any surprises at all. I don't think any minds were changed. I think after the first hour, there was very little in terms of new opinions or new questions. Last month's meeting, in my mind, was a big example of how our large size <coughs> makes us ineffective and inefficient and this is a first step towards changing that. So I'm going to encourage everybody to help me keep that campaign promise tonight and to vote yes on this change. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Jenkins. Thank you. Uh, Chris, thank you for your comments. It was great to uh, precursor to mine. Uh, I, I truly agree with everything that you said. I, uh, I commend the committee uh, for all their work. Um, However, I did want to uh, make a motion to amend the resolution uh, to state lines 17, 21, 24, 28, and 37, where it all states 21. I would propose that this gets changed to 17. Um, as was noted, uh, 17 kept coming up uh, in various data points. If you look at the coverage from our committee, uh, obviously wanting to keep it in the odd number, 17 would be the magic number as well. Uh, so I'm proposing that uh, that amendment uh, so that we at least discuss that number and start there. Thank you. Okay, do I hear a second? Do we need a motion and a second for the, the actual resolution. Oh, for the actual resolution? Oh, we did that already. Oh, yeah, we did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's a second, uh, Supervisor Basil, for the amendment. 
Okay, is there any discussion regarding the amendment? Supervisor Mahalik. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to make a comment, too, uh, about Paul's report, but I'll save that because we're just discussing the amendment right now. Uh, I believe that 21 is a good number. I would like to see, as uh, Supervisor Foster mentioned, uh, a continual reduction over time. But uh, eating an elephant one bite at a time is often heard, and I think really that's what we need to do. Seeing that we're going to be going to uh, a form of government that has a county executive rather than a county administrator, we're going to have a lot to swallow. Uh, I would like to take this more incrementally uh, with the idea of moving down, but I think 21 is the correct number. That would represent from the time I started on the board four terms ago, going from 30 to 21, which is 9. And if you look at 9 compared to 30, that's a 30% reduction during my uh, so far eight-year tenure. I think that that's uh, the speed at which we can absorb uh, what we need to and make sure that we are as effective and efficient and if we can find more efficiencies down the road that's the time when I would look at 17 or 16 or 15. Right now I would personally go with 21. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Sarsi to the amendment? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, first of all the statement of Paul uh, made about uh, no, um, uh, Logan County is it. a little for the amendment. Um, they were at 18, they went down to 11, and they were doing like 50 hours a week. Talked to many of those people there, they put a lot of time in there. I don't know if it has come to a thing, but the last time I talked to them, uh, it, there was not a happy medium. So, on that one. I'm not, I'm not nailing it, Paul, I'm just, that's just what my friends have been telling me. Um, Number two, uh, I'm surprised Mr. Mahalik didn't say this, but in Minnesota, I was in Minnesota a couple months ago, and they are not, they're not uh, county supervisors, they're county commissioners. There's eight of them, and they make $104,000 a year. But the area is actually not big in that thing. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any further comment, any further discussion on the amendment? Are we ready? Okay, we'll vote electronically on amendment. <coughs> Is everyone in? Is everyone voted? Okay, motion fails. Five to seventeen. Okay, back to the uh, ordinance. Is there any further discussion on the ordinance? I'm sorry, the resolution. Seeing none. Uh, oh, what do we do? Oh. oh, there you are. Okay, I see. Okay, sorry, Supervisor Mahalik. Thank you. 
Supervisor Stephan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, after talking to a lot of my constituents, um, they like the idea of a smaller government. But um, in my small township of Farmington, a lot of them are worried about not being represented. Paul, could you explain to the whole board what the effects of a smaller board size would have on the townships and villages, whether that's positive or negative? I was in on the meetings, but I don't know if the whole board here has any insight on it. So I, I can I think I can address that. Um, so I, I don't think there's a an easy answer to that question, uh, and the number of supervisors doesn't necessarily translate directly into representation for any one community type. So um, er, late in the slides, um, if you go I think to the last I believe it was the last slide um, on the very bottom here. Uh, Paul points to when that redistricting process happens, um, identifying parameters for redistricting is critical. So in the past, uh, the county has put together a redistricting committee. Uh, in other places, uh, sometimes that is outsourced to an uh, out, outfit like SurPAC. Um, but as part of that um, process, there's rules that kind of dictate how we create district boundaries. So just to give you a for instance, to get specifically to your question, regardless of the number of county board supervisors, you could say, um, we'll just say for the moment, Ashley and Eric Bancott are going to do the redistricting. Ashley and Eric, we want to make sure that 33% of all, all county board supervisor districts have a majority of town representation. You could write that specifically into your redistricting plan. Now they have to fall within all of the other parameters that we talked that, that Paul talked about just a few moments ago, including the best practice of 10% or less variation between districts. But you're you're able to influence which municipality types, uh, which rural or urban type have more or less representation. So the number of county board supervisory districts doesn't really matter. What matters is the rules that you put in place the first time. Part of the reason that Eric Damcott said, please don't do this again in the middle of the census is, once that census is done, you really lose a lot of control over that. It becomes very difficult to make sure that there's equal representation, uh, rural, urban, as an example, or city, village, town. Uh, if you think back to when we did, um, I can't remember what, what study process we did, <clears throat> but that study process identified that a th about a third of Washington County is township or, or rural, a third is village, and a third is city. So you could go into the process knowing that. So once again, it, the number of total supervisors really isn't, isn't the relevant number that uh, if, if I were a, a resident of the town, I'd worry about, what I'd worry about is how many seats are built for rural representation. Because, okay. and, and I say that because there's 26 seats today. If the rules were written so that the villages and cities were rated heaviest today, you could end up with four seats that are rural seats. This is, this is the larger argument of redistricting. It's why it's made it in three different states of the Supreme Court. It's all about in how the rules are written, not necessarily in the number of seats. Thank you. Supervisor Hartwig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Josh, for explaining a little bit about that. And Mr. Stefford here. I had the same... Um, situation in the town of Jackson. A lot of people are worried about representation in our rural area. And I hear it every day. I heard it today probably three times. So that's my biggest thing. The other thing I was going to bring up, I was wondering how they had our committee come up to number 21. But kind of was explained that. Uh, there's another thing that, um, that I like to do is I'd like to ask Josh a question. Um, as an administrator, you're pretty professional. You have a pretty professional uh, position there. And your job should be, um, you know, asking questions and recommendations and analyzing things. Um, what, uh, 
What is your recommendation for this county size? That's what I'd like to know. Well, thank you for calling me professional. I like to agree. Um, the I was a uh, I was a part of every one of the meetings, uh, the ad hoc committee meetings, uh, and part of all the discussions for ad hoc. Part of all the discussions with the ad hoc committee, um, and and uh, the some of the data that that Paul pointed to uh, as regard to the top ten counties and things of that variety. Um, those are things that we work together on. So uh, I was involved with the entirety of the process. The one criticism that I had at the ad hoc committee, uh, I carried it through to the executive committee and I'll carry it through today, is the same criticism I had during the state of the county address, and that is we don't go to the people to find out what the people are interested in. And I'm not suggesting necessarily that we have to pull every single person in Washington County. Uh, when it got to the ad hoc committee, finally, it seemed to me the only the only reasonable way to actually get something done was to go to a referendum, and I proposed that. It got shot down. Um, I also, at the beginning of the process, suggested we do town hall meetings and we go around the county asking people what they think, um, and that also got shot down. So, similar to what I said in May of 2019, um, you should be talking to people and asking them what they think and having forum public forums where you're taking their input. Because I think Supervisor Stephan's question is going to come up hundreds and hundreds of times. And once you answer that question, so I've talked to folks in town. I went to, I went to church um, on Sunday in a, a, one of the country churches in town. And I had two people ask me about the size of the county board. And I gave them exactly the answer that I just gave Supervisor Stephan, and it was much shorter because we were walking out of church. But as soon as I described that, the, the, the response of the first lady, who um, was probably about 80 years old, was, well, then cut it down to three. <laughs> and obviously, she was joking. But uh, I, I think people don't know how the process works. And we don't pay them to know how the process works. They just want you to run good government. Um, so once you educate them a little bit, it's much easier to have a conversation about what should we actually be at. And everybody's embarrassed when you say Minnesota has five super... The most embarrassing one is Los Angeles County, California has three. I mean, people think we're ridiculous. We, I mean, we are a little bit ridiculous. So, I, again, I think my recommendation would be it, it, it hasn't changed since May of 2019 and really back to when I started here. Um, but we need to get around to people in the communities, and now you've um, given me the privilege, I guess, of going and knocking doors, and I'm hearing these same questions and having these same conversations. So, the 21, Supervisor Mahalik did a nice job of explaining why 21 is a good step. Um, a number of you have talked about something very similar. I think it's very reasonable to go to 21. I would just like to see people more involved. So if you're going to do 21, I think you have really good arguments and good reasons. And when I'm knocking on doors, I'm going to explain it very similar to how Supervisor Mahalik did, especially when I'm in Hartford. Uh, but but I, I, I would like to see more involvement from the public, just in general, but especially in this case. Thank you. I have one, one more question. Um, why, why don't you think we shouldn't wait until the new board is in effect to make this decision. Why would we do it now? Don't you think it would be nice to let the new board have a say so on it? Well, since about half of the new board members who aren't sitting in that section are actually in this room right now, uh, in effect, they will. Um, and they're hearing a lot of the things that they're going to hear in a year anyway. Um, so uh, could you wait? Could you punt this until the next board? Yeah, undoubtedly you could. Um, it, could you go back to the slide with the makeup of the committee, please? So, if you look at the makeup of the committee, now a lot has changed since this committee was created the first time. But uh, Paul was pointing out if the diversity of this committee. Um, it, and, and if you think about it, there, there was, there's youth on this committee. Uh, there's folks who've been on this, com on this county board and involved in county government for many, many years, uh, decades in some cases. 
There's new members to the committee. There's outgoing members to the committee. There's members from just about every corner of Washington County. So the intent was, you've got a, a very diverse group of folks that were in this group, and specifically, uh, I'll point to two people, Supervisor Merton and Supervisor McCune, who have been here a really long time, who can opine better than probably, certainly, no offense to the incoming supervisors, but certainly to incoming supervisors who don't know uh, some of the points that were made, like Supervisor Mahal made, that Wisconsin is the only state in the union that has a highway department here in the county rather than at the state level. Usually that takes you a couple years to figure that kind of stuff out. So you're, by doing it right now, you're basically capturing a snapshot of this body telling the next one, we've been around for a while, here's what we think you should do. Now, with all due respect, uh, come, come the month of May, Supervisor Meyercourt could say, thank you very much, I appreciate your input, go pound sand, we're going to go down to seven. It, I mean, the next board is going to have the ability to do that. But by virtue of this committee, you're capturing a, a diverse group of folks, many of whom are, are not going to be here uh, in two months. If you look at that list, half of that group's not even going to be sitting on the other side of the stias. Um, but you got their opinion before you walk out the door. And the resolution is only binding in so far as there's no other resolution that supersedes it. So uh, the next board passes a resolution, that resolution will supersede this resolution. This just puts a flag in the, in the, in the ground. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Supervisor Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just wanted to point out when we decided to go to uh, county executive, one of the big pushes for going to county executive was that Washington County keeps growing. Now we're looking at downsizing the board, and yet Washington County keeps growing. So we're going to remove some of the representation for our constituents before they even get here. And also, as um, Mr. Mahal pointed out, Sonata Home is a very big issue that we're going to be dealing with in the next couple of years. And having a diverse board, I think, is very important. And getting that word out to our constituents that this is happening. We have a smaller board, will we reach that many constituents? So um, we need to make sure that we're hearing what people have to say about Samaritan and that we do the right thing. Thank you. Supervisor Schleif. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Marcella, for those comments. The, the Samaritan is a big bump in the road ahead of this board, whoever's on it. Um, but I just wanted to add a few comments. Um, interestingly, in our meetings, uh, Walworth County, which has only 11 and went to 11 as a result of a a referendum, a binding referendum. So they didn't have a choice. When they got to 11, um, they made it work, but it's a lot more time involved for everybody. Um, we've been working on this board to make it accessible to the working man. Um, in Walworth County, there are 11 board members, nine of them are retired, two own their own businesses. So as far as opening things up, you know, the more you shrink the board, the more you limit yourself as to who can serve on the board. Um, some of that is driven by them having day meetings, but you know, you got to do the work of the county. And again, Wisconsin does a lot. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Also, uh, we all know how strong personalities can move a board. And that's one of the reasons I opted to stay a little bit bigger than not go real small because pretty soon you got two people running the whole county. We're already going to have Josh running the county, kind of. So, <laughs> so I, I think 21 is the right move. Um, and with the big move to going to county executive, 
um, I urge us not to change too much too soon. Thank you. Yeah. Supervisor Carr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the things that we have not discussed uh, this evening is the concept of uh, who's going to run for these various uh, districts that, uh, you know, seats for the various districts. And one of the problems that all governments are having now is getting people to step up and serve. Uh, so, right now we have a situation where we're having a very significant turnover of the board in this next election. And uh, there's quite a number of seats that are running unopposed. If we are to shrink the board, and you know I'm in favor of not going down to 21 because I was one of the people who voted for the committee. But uh, I think we need to be very careful because if we shrink it too much, uh, when you have a greater number of people in each district, the cost of a campaign, especially if it's a contested campaign, uh, goes up. And if, you've got, if you want to attract people, you want to do it in such a way that people can get into this business without spending a fortune. So, um, I think that it's reasonable that we uh, shrink it down a, a rather small amount. In this case, it's going from 26 to 21 is what the committee recommended. That means that there will be about another 1,200 people, at least based upon the current population, about 1,200 more people in each district, which I think is reasonable. I think that's something that uh, the individual people who are campaigning for these positions can live with. Um, but I would not go down any further than that. I wouldn't recommend going down any further than that because if you double the size of a district, go down to you know, 13 or 14, uh, all of a sudden instead of having 5,500 people in the district, you got 11 or 12,000 in the district. That gets to be a very expensive campaign, a very time-consuming campaign. Uh, we have people in this room that are campaigning right now who know how costly and how time-consuming it is knocking on doors, including, of course, our a uh, very able administrator who's sitting up there chuckling. And so uh, we need to be careful about that. And I think that uh, in, in order to do this properly, uh, we probably need to just reduce it to just a small amount of under 21 and, and I'll leave it at that. So thank you. Supervisor Merton. Thank you. Uh, as you all know, I'm one of the people who believes in representation. And for me, any reduction is a loss of representation. Although some people on this board feel that their ideas are the best, and no one else really, if you're, if you're in a minority, you can be there, but you really don't mean much. Those are all things that, as my constituents look at it, they look at honesty and above board character. More people, you get more ideas better decisions are made. Just to cut a board and determine that numbers is the answer to what you want to do, I do not think is a wise decision. I served on county government for many years. I served on local government. I served on school district governments. I understand where they all come from. And I look now and I say, okay, if you think the county board can sit with less members, and it's not necessary to have a broad perspective of members on your county board. Why do cities and villages have so many people on their boards? Look at your population in the cities and villages and look at the numbers that you have. A whole lot different from the county, isn't it? But some people don't see that. I guess that, as far as I'm concerned, um, local municipalities especially towns, are going to be losers. No matter how you want to look at it, villages and cities are kind of governed similarly. When it comes to town government, they can't uh, develop tips. They're not allowed to do that. There are other things in, in the legislature that do not affect them. Annexation, big thing for annexation with villages and, and cities versus towns. And those are ideas that you don't understand unless I guess you live in one. I've noticed over the years, whenever I served on the school board, it was a whole lot different for me as a, min 
municipality from a town to look at things versus the people that were in the central part in the cities and villages. They look at things totally different and their ideas are different. So I just like to have you think a little bit about what you're asking when you're asking to decrease the board. I, for one, cannot support it. Thank you. Sergeant Bossert. So I've heard some talk here about needing diverse opinions. But I think with our current size, we actually have too many opinions and we have a hard time coming to agreement on things. People have mentioned Samaritan. I don't see how we're going to get 26 people to agree on a solution for Samaritan. I think that makes the case that we need to reduce. There's too many different voices, too many different opinions, and reaching a consensus sometimes is really challenging with the gorgeous today. So Samaritan reaffirms my belief that we need to reduce the size of the board. And I look at a lot of the local governments. Most of the townships have town councils of five. West Bend, the city of West Bend has eight aldermen. They don't have 26, they have eight. And you know, I look at the city of West Bend on this board. Right now we have six county board supervisors who represent the city of West Bend. I think for those people who are worried about town representation, look at after the redistricting where the city of West Bend is. If the city of West Bend stays at six, your concerns are probably valid. If the city of West Bend goes down to four or five, that seems appropriate. If the board's going to reduce by about 15 to 20 percent, the city of West Bend should lose 15 to 20 percent of their representation. So I think a lot of the fears I'm hearing are unwarranted. And I think the opposite, yeah, well, I think I've said what I've needed to say. So thank you. Supervisor Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd hope to be the last word, but it looks like Mr. Schleif came in after me. <laughs> so when I came onto the board a few years ago, one of the first things that I said, the first time I ever spoke on this board, I uh, thank the retirees uh, for, for being able to serve our county. Without them, you couldn't run an election in this uh, county for sure. I thank the professional people for their, their knowledge and, and what they bring to the table. Uh, I just noticed the distinct lack of working class folks like myself. And that has been something that for the last almost four years now I've been pushing for. I was a major drive behind the night meetings. I, I continue to want to do that with the uh, committee as well. Uh, I've always tried to make it more accessible. I do believe in downsizing the board. Uh, we downsized it, like Mr. Mahalo said, and I thought it was a great point. We got downsized it four. Now we're looking to possibly downsize it five more. That's almost 30%. You show me another county in this state that's done that. Uh, I don't believe there's any. I dare say there isn't. Um, as far as concerns about representation, I certainly understand, Ms. Merton. I think, uh, I think there, it's a legitimate concern. I've heard the same thing from many town folks uh, in the Keys area as well. Um, and at my church out in Newburgh, I heard the same thing. But as uh, it has been pointed out by Paul and, and, and uh, Josh, you have to understand that we set the parameters of the reduction. So. If there's 30% township, 30% rural, and 30% city, then we'll reduce those five, each taking 30%. So the numbers, while they shrink, stay exactly the same. So I, I don't look at that as being an, an issue. What I'm more concerned about is striking the balance of making sure that we don't end up with a board that is the same 11 people, or the same seven people, and somebody like myself could not possibly be on this board. I could not possibly afford to run a, an election where it cost me $10,000 for a mailing. You know, and that's legitimately would easily cost that for somebody, you know, we've cut down to like 11. Uh, so I could not possibly go for cutting down to some number like that. I think this is a prudent cut at 21. I think it's 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 fair, it's acceptable uh, it, to the to the people who will be coming onto the board. 
I don't think that really scares you too much. I think you probably think it's relatively reasonable as well, uh, because I wouldn't want to run for a seat and just have it yanked out from under me. That's what uh, one, uh, one of the candidates had, had talked about. Um, and that's probably not going to happen, because if you look at the relative turnover, uh, we're probably going to lose, last time we lost, like, what was it, six people or eight people uh, did not run, and this time it's possibly nine, um, something like that. So by reducing five, I don't think that's going to interfere with how it's redistricted. It might affect one or two races, but I don't it, uh, think it will affect overall, because that will all be set out ahead you know, of time. So to wrap this up, um, I just think this is a, a really a, a good compromise, a good start, uh, and certainly something that the next board can revisit if they choose to. And uh, I believe we should go with the 21. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roger Schleif. Thank you, sir. Um, those comments were very well put, uh, Mr. Kelly. Um, the one last thing I want to say that in Walworth County, we worry about rural versus city. In Walworth County, of the 11, two live in the city. One lives in a little bird, like 300 people, and the rest live in the country. So, you know, that's one example. I don't know if it means anything, but I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. See no further discussion. I will vote on this electronically. Says the wrong one. Yep. So what are we voting on? We're You're voting, voting on resolution 58. 58. So let me just close that one for a second. Yep. Hold on. Okay. Okay, Mr. Yep. Reed. Revote. Who's ever voting on? Tom, repeat what they're voting on. Voting on 2019 Resolution 58, Washington County Board of Supervisors, board size. As the resolution states, moving from 26 to 21. Everybody in? No, we have 21. Somebody has not voted? Make sure it says your vote has been cast. Upper right. Motion passes 15 to 7. 2019 Resolution 16 Fee for Transfer of Joint Property to Surviving Joint Tenant 70 25. Take a motion to accept. Supervisor Mahalik, Supervisor Mary. Any questions on this? I don't see no discussion. We'll vote on this electronically. Oh, I'm sorry. Supervisor Mahalik. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a, a quick thing. In, in, we're striking the $25, so if the dollar amount of changes, we can do it, and I understand that. What is the current dollar amount now uh, for this? Uh, it's $30. So, in effect, we're raising the $5. I just, just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. It's statutory, though, so that's what we should be charging us. Okay. Thank you very much. Motion passes 21 to 1. Next meeting date, Wednesday, March 11th, 2020, 6 o'clock p.m. Um, I don't know if everybody has it on their desk, but um, legislative uh, breakfast is tomorrow, or uh, Friday, I'm sorry. Um, these um, are 
extremely important if you can make them. Um, having a face to face with your legislator and talking with them really does a lot. We've got a lot of um, our, our public affairs coordinator, uh, Allenberger, is in Madison quite a bit working on legislation that benefits the citizens of Washington County. Having that additional time and face time with those supervisor with those uh, legislators really goes a long way when we're talking with them. So if you have the time, and actually it's a pretty decent breakfast too. So um, if you have time to come, uh, it'd be much appreciated and uh, it does a measurable um, benefit to the county. Okay, why don't we take a uh, short five minute break and then we'll go. Pardon? Um, Good. Uh, the cool session, uh, Dave Barber has the flu tonight. And he's oh. at home with the fever and some other things. So um, we'll postpone that until next month. Uh, we were hoping to do it this month because next month you're going to actually get proposals uh, for action items. Um, so I'm sorry that it won't, you won't have a month to digest it. Um, but we'll present the closed session next month uh, along with some proposals um, on, on some spending items that we're going to ask you to do. Okay, seeing that we don't have an, a closed session, uh, we are here by adjourn. Thank you, everybody.